Alright. Finish getting set up here. I'm running a little behind today. Not terribly so. Come on. No, 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 no. The one that's afraid to light a match trying to light one. Come on. There we go. I'm always afraid they're gonna snap just as it lights and like the head's gonna go flaming through the air and just land on something and then everything's gonna go whoosh and go up in flames. One of the irrational thoughts that pops through my head. I have had matches snap on me when I'm trying to do them though. I've had the uh... Oh, my wrist is still really sore. I've had the uh... The little sticky part. Crack. That is a very sore wrist. We might need to brace that today. Or later today when I get off the stream. We're still working on this. Hey, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Could you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Could you dump this? Mm. And put some fresh water in it. Mm -hmm. All right. So I got, I got plenty of, uh, green paper. It's all the green, that's all this shade I had in my bead box. Um, I still have some more in a Ziploc from a different package, but I think, um, I think they're close enough where we're going to be okay. Um, I know that you guys like to see I know you guys like to see the, the whole of the project, so this is where we're at right now. Um, we've turned the corner and we're now working this way. I am going to have to flip this sideways though, just so I'm not leaning so far forward. Um, but that's where we're at at the moment. We've got the incense uh, a burning. Let me see, can I? Can I close you all the way, or are you going to be pissy about it? Sometimes that burner needs to be cracked open on the side. Or it gets angry and goes out. Alright, I remembered to mute my desktop audio today so we didn't have to restart the stream. Um, as always, we are... What the heck? Something keeps touching my leg under my desk and it is like giving me all of the anxiety what the hell is it a fly is it a hair what the fuck is this a mosquito something something keeps touching my leg might be a mosquito or like a little fruit fly or something stop touching my leg so there's no animals under my desk at the moment. Nobody even close enough. I do have what looks like a bug bite on part of my one leg, so... I guess it could be like a mosquito or something. I saw one in here the other day. That's why I'm saying mosquito. Um, it's either that or like a fly or something. Because it keeps tapping the same part of my leg. I keep touching the other side of my keyboard thinking there's like a hair dangling down or something. It's a fuzz. Alright. Sorry, I had to take my, my, my uh, vitamin. I forgot. Alright. So I'm going to have to work on it like this, just so I'm not stretched quite so.
quite so far away from the edge of the desk. As I am destroying my desk, trying to get my chair to cooperate, and failing miserably. Alright. I'm going to pull this guy a little bit closer to me. Alright, so we've got our stylus, we've got our scissors, we have our flamingo tweezers. Oh, that's going to have. Alright, that's less of a glare there. Alright, um. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Do. Do I start with green? Or do we want to work on these two? I guess we'll start with green. Might as well. Alright. As we need our glue. Ow, that hurt. difficult is it to open a glue bottle for Christ's sake there we go Hard to get that open when you're trying to be gentle, so you don't lose it. This one's been locking in place, though. I've had other ones where um, the lid hasn't wanted to quite cooperate. gonna need some of these guys. Alright, so I started to say, um, I have my music on. You guys can't hear it and that is on purpose because I don't want to get my ass in trouble. So, a lot harder to turn my hand to uh, figure out our size here. And then I cut it, and the piece I cut goes flying. Right. I don't even know. Oh, there it is. I was gonna say I don't even know where it landed. Right. Well, we can kind of work with that. So, um, listener's choice. You put on whatever it is that you want to listen to. And then everybody will be happy. And you can just pretend that I'm playing that. Right? So everybody gets to jump in on this creativity business that way. simple fact of using your imagination is, um, you know, an act of creativity.
I just want that a little bit deeper, not much. You can see the sand in there. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, <coughs> um, hey, can I bug you one more second? Mm -hmm. Can I have that last roll of paper towels under the tank? Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Sorry about that. I need to have some paper towel nearby. And I'm looking at something through my glasses. And it's very distracting. And it's kicking off my stigmatism because I keep wanting to focus on that thing instead of looking through it. It's very difficult to look through. And we may actually need a new paper towel here soon. Alright, you know what? Let's refold it and use the inside pieces now because they seem to feel a little more absorbent. They're not quite as beat down. Alright. So, let's get to putting in the things and stuff. That was actually a touch big. And I'm not that worried if I don't get right up on the edge because we still have to do this section in here. This is not done. So we have more than enough time to fix that. <clears throat> so I hope everyone is doing all right today. And it's turning out to be a fairly good day for you. So yeah, we definitely need to cut that a little bit smaller. Not... Mm. Alright, I'm going to push that back so I don't elbow that off the table again. Alright, I'm thinking that that's really more... Our um, size that we're looking for here is it's wanting to unravel. That's all right. We can tuck him back into place. It's not a huge problem. And that guy was a little small, so just can't seem to get the right size here. Probably because of the angle I'm working on. A little awkward to get the uh, hand twisted in there. Let's try these. 
still feels a little big there, but only just. Like that piece is pretty good. This song in a while. What is this? Ah, All American Rejects gives you help. All right. Mm, okay, there is a slight color difference. Oh well, There's not much we can do about that. That is the way it's gonna be. Not terrible. Some of the dye lots have been pretty, pretty rough. These are about the same. So this is not the same. All right. Just trying to get these guys tucked in here. So that we can still see everything else. A lot easier said than done sometimes. tapped in up there because you know why not we don't want to waste him that might be about our length oh and our incense went out because I closed the box of course it did. It just hit me, I'm like, hmm, I don't smell the incense anymore. Should I be worried? Alright. Oh yeah, that definitely went out. Alright. Mm, okay. All right, Matchbox. Whew, that was a delayed light. Oh my goodness. It's terrifying for me. Just making sure it's lit now. Gonna be a little smoky. Get my my bottle cap lid. Or my bottle cap lid, yeah, same thing. My bottle cap that I have in there in place to keep it open. Since it doesn't seem to want to be shut right now. Had a beautiful incense burner. Actually I still have it. 
um, like a carved dragon on the top of it um, that we had picked up on one trip to Key West. And uh, like the smoke looks like it's coming out of the dragon's mouth. Absolutely enamored with it. But now if I don't have an air vent on it after years of using it, um, the incense tends to go out. And one of the stick holders on the one end has a little tiny piece of stick stuck in it. I don't know how to get it out. I might need to take some clay or something sticky. Maybe I need an eraser to try to grab it to pull it out enough so I can remove it. I really want to get those big sticks. <clears throat> They're super expensive though, and the big stick burners are super expensive. Um, well, right now everything I guess is technically super expensive for us. Like 20 bucks is super expensive. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, but I've seen them on Wildberry and I'm like, I want that so much. I'm trying to measure here. Now I can't grab them. My fingers are a little swollen today. Which isn't helping. My whole hand's swollen. We're getting some extra work done. Yesterday I was busting my ass. <laughs> I had a lot to do yesterday. Um, at least in stream prep, so my hands a little extra angry. Had to uh, had to get the the priest done for Wednesday. Um, had to get the mage done. Well, not done, but you know. Um, stream ready, shall we say. They'll, they'll be finished on stream. Um, oh, that, that is a different color. Now that I'm looking at that with the good light on, it's not, it's subtle. But uh, it is different. Unless I'm just crazy. Spin doctors. But, um, yeah, so we had to, had to bust my butt on the mage, on the priest. And uh, I started to work on the rogue. And I can still only kill those stupid moths. So it's going to be another long level. And, uh, and then I was battling the mass pulling farmers because the second I got over to where I needed to be I'm like hey where's all the mobs like I actually checked my latency to make sure I wasn't about to DC and that's why I wasn't seeing anything little guy. Get that one in there. Yeah, don't forget to check your stylus or whatever tool you're using. to uh, push your little guys into place.
Don't, don't you go flying. Spreading the glue around. Make sure that we get a good, good coverage layer in there. Remember, rinse your glue brush right away. Don't just want to leave it sitting out for the glue to dry in. Cause that's gonna be quite the problem. Yes, need a few more of these little guys. Is that drop one? somewhere. And I don't know where it went. Did it land in my lap? Yes, it did. Well, it landed on my chair. Good enough. This guy's little tail in there. Might have needed to be just a smidge smaller. But I wasn't quite sure. But I could pull that off with my chubby fingers. Kind of unraveled a bit, but that's okay. Not a big deal. We can make that work. This one gonna fit. Alright, we can kind of get that guy in there because we need to get like two tiny guys to shove in there. I would use an X Acto, but I think that would be more trouble than it's worth to be perfectly honest I just realized that's the paper glaring at me I must have gotten a drop of glue on it like I keep thinking it's a piece of glitter because the light is hitting it in just a way at least from my angle so I'm like what is this on here that's why I keep fussing with that blue section. Alright. Sorry, I have something in my eye. Okay. And we need to be able to see. Just make sure that if you do have something in your eye, and you go to try to get it out, use a finger that doesn't have glue on it, okay? Then you're really going to have a word of problems. And we don't want that. No, we don't. This section's 
a little bit wider so they don't have to be quite so tiny tiny in there Be nice if that eye wasn't being weird at the moment. I have allergy eyes, so they're a little itchy, they're a little gunky. And just overall being a pain in the ass. Maybe there's something on my glasses. That is also a possibility. It sounded like I just dropped one. I guess I didn't. Well, maybe it was my earbud wire hitting something. Moving on. Moving on, moving on. Alright. Get this next guy. Kind of squished in there. No, no. There we go. Sometimes you gotta let them sort out how they want to sit. Sometimes it is not how you want them to sit. You might need to fuss back and forth just a little bit so that you both are somewhat happy. Alright. So, let me bring up that screen. Okay. Oh, oh we've got a had more there than I thought I did. All right. Let's try to figure out what size we need next. Use this. Nope, that works. Sometimes, even if you're a little bit um, big, if the tissue paper is the right texture, you can squish it in there a little bit easier. So, thanks, Ed. I have no idea what you just knocked off that shelf, but thanks, buddy. What did he knock over? Oh, I'm up to the bucket. Oh, okay. Ed's getting into trouble. Trying to climb into the cubbies under the crab tank. Someday we'll be able to do uh, live cap live crab cam. Um we might do that on YouTube, though, I don't know. We've got a... We've got a, an okay camera that we're using right now in the attic to try to figure out what the hell's going on up there. Um, it is weatherproof, and we might be able to set it up in the crab tank to have some hermit crab action. But right now we're in the 29 gallon tank. Um, we might wait to do that until we switch to the 50. I have a 50 gallon fish tank. Um, it's just collecting dust in the shed, but I really wanted him to do 
the setup in for his crabs um, to begin with. But it was going to take um, a little bit more money to get that one set up because we were going to need more of the, um, the coconut stuff for the, um, for the, the, uh, the bottom, the substrate stuff. He doesn't use sand. Um, sand, he said, can be a little bit more problematic. And you have to bake it to sterilize it. And you have to bake it in like a super thin layer, and that's a lot of sand to bake. So this stuff, you just kind of... I forget what the fuck he called it. Magic Earth? It comes in a friggin' brick. And it's really super compacted. And then you soak it in water. And um, it soaks up all the water, and it gets kind of wet and expands a bit. And um, then you kind of like wring the water out of it. A little bit. You still want it somewhat damp because they need the humidity. But uh, when we get a few more crabs, because these live, so we've got all four alive, so we're super happy. And I found out last night um, through one of my my Florida Keys um, things that I follow on Twitter now that I didn't know that Robbie's, the, the tarpon place, where you go to feed the tarpons, the bar or whatever, it's kind of like a menagerie building. Or um, store, I don't know, it's like a restaurant, they've got a pool, it's a bar, you can feed tarpons, it's crazy what you can do there. They sell hermit crabs and big ones. When I saw that, I was like, what? How did we not know this? We've never stopped there, so that's probably why. But I was like, what? I was like, oh, we definitely have to go back now. And the next time we go, we won't have the dogs with us, so we can actually um, stop at some of these places through the keys and not worry about them being in the hot car and somebody freaking out and I would never leave them in the hot car anyway um, but uh, like we wouldn't be able to take them in there with us so things you have to think about when you're traveling with pets I think we may need to get another bottle of glue. I think. We don't need it today. But I should have enough left. To be able to get that, I forget how much it was. I think it was five bucks for the big bottle. I think, or thereabouts, from a uh, Walmart. Next section. All right. Well, we've gotten pretty far on that set of paper that we pulled out. I mean, we still have a long way to go, but we're still on that first set. 
So I hope everybody's Sunday's going well. I hope your weekends went fairly well. Um, if you're on your Monday, I'm sorry. I hope your work week's not terrible. Hope you are staying safe and you are well. So for us in the state. Yesterday was 9-11's 20th anniversary of the um, plane hijackings and terrorist attacks. Um, and a lot of people I saw talking on Facebook and Twitter um, remembering where they were that day and what they were doing. And uh, I was at work, actually. Um, I'd started my job in 99. So um, in, like I have trouble remembering, like, hey Dave, how's it going? Um, I have trouble remembering like day to day. Um, things sometimes day-to-day -day details or you know what position I held when or whatever um, but I believe now when I, I do remember when I started I was working nights part-time um, for uh, for AC more and um, so I was cashier floor and I ended up within six months maybe six months to a year um, they had promoted me to um, to merchandiser for a kids crafts department because that position opened up and they needed somebody so um, I was merchandising and because I was one of the smaller departments, I was first called to register, so it was a very bizarre day. Um, I don't remember a whole lot of, you know, were we busy, were we not busy. Um, I do remember that the um, office manager and the store manager, husband and wife, were kind of huddled in the office and that we were finding out bits and pieces of information working on the floor and I didn't really have any access to hear anything while it was on the floor. Um, and uh, it was very bizarre because I just remember thinking, you know, should we even be here? Because people were talking about like terrorist attacks. I'm like, should we be at work right now? Like, what is going on? Because we were in South Jersey. Like we weren't right across the river from New York, but, you know, we weren't that far, because, you know, there's all kinds of confusion, and, you know, what the hell is going on, and, and, um, you know, we were working sales floor and cashiering, so we didn't have the luxury of really finding out too much information, just little bits and snippets that you could find out when you went into the office to um, grab equipment and things so and I just kept remembering you know I, I want to go home I want to find out what is happening you know, like I want to go and see the news I want to know what all's going on it was just it was a very strange day but the thing that has stuck with me the most um, we lived in the flight path of the Atlantic City um, International Airport. Now, even though they were set up to welcome international flights, um, they never really had any airlines jump at that, which was sad because I mean it was a nicer alternative. It was a smaller airport, but nicer alternative to having to go to Philadelphia and um, travel the train or the bus to get up there 
um, or drive the couple of hours in the insane Philadelphia traffic. But um, anyhow, they shared runways and land at the airport complex with the 177th, I believe, fighter wing for the National Guard. Alright. So, they had grounded all of the planes. By, by dinner time, like, every plane was grounded in, in U.S. airspace. Which was weird. Um, now, while it was a smaller airport and only had, I think, at the time, two airlines going out of it, um, you would still hear planes going over, heading to Philly, um, excuse me, planes coming in to land, planes taking off, and you would hear the fighter jets throughout the day doing their periodic takeoffs and landings and stuff because they would fly over our house, you know, out to the ocean and turn and go wherever they were going up and down the coast. That night, I was laying in bed. I was watching the news, trying to, you know, fully grasp, you know, everything that was going on, and you know, and everybody was just kind of in a state of shock and, and panic, and and just not really grasping what the hell just happened. Um, you know, hoping that they were gonna find more people alive, but you know, secretly knowing in the back of your brain that no, they weren't the way the building fell. Um, but as I'm laying there trying to sleep, the quietness just descended upon me and it was so weird. And then, you know, you would start to be coming to terms with how quiet it was. Not that that many planes took off in the middle of the night, but as the night wore on, it's just like, it's, it's creepy quiet. And then, out of nowhere, you would hear the scream of a fighter jet go overhead. And that was, like, really disturbing because of how quiet it had been. And then just this fighter jet splitting the silence. And it was like, oh, God. And it was like another reminder of what had just happened. And it was quiet for a couple of days while they were trying to figure out flights and when they were going to let planes back in the air and what they were going to do to make sure that this didn't happen again when they put the planes back up. But it was just so unsettling to hear that level of quiet after growing up in this flight path area. And then, you know, the days that followed, you know, everybody being super together and, and being nice to one another it was almost weird because up until that point you know everybody had been you know doing their own thing not really paying attention to other people and it was just kind of it was nice but it was weird and when when you're not used to that and um it was a good thing and then you can turn around and look at where we are today and everybody being so ugly at one another and it's like what happened you know like like what what the fuck happened like what moment did things suddenly change for back to the the shitty side of things did just the novelty of being nice to each other wear off like I, I don't I don't know very strange all right enough of that all right let me tap that in there so how is everybody today hopefully my mic is still working where's my stream info yep mic's still working Sorry about the other day, last last week, two weeks ago. I wasn't ignoring people. My mic malfunctioned on that one bloodthirsty day. I was talking to people. Uh, apparently, nobody heard me. So that was fun. All right, those are a little small. Well, no, actually, they're not. 
we can tuck those guys in there at the bottom. So how is everybody doing? Hope it's a good day. Hope it was a relatively good weekend. Sorry, I saw one of these little guys that had sort of escaped and was sitting on top of another section and I wanted to grab them while I seen them. Alright. So. Get this little guy in. No, get in there. Try to make sure we're not covering up our little support feathers in between. Those are feather bones, if I like to refer to them as. More than likely not the appropriate term, but. Let go, thank you. Alright, now it seems like it's time for some Linkin Park on my playlist. And once again, if you guys want my playlist, or want the the name of the songs on my playlist, I'm not actually going to transfer you the entire playlist. Um, that would take way too much um, silliness. So. I will more than willing to give you guys the list, the names, the text version of uh, of my uh, playlist. If you want it, you'll just have to. DM me um, on Twitter and I can get that to you. I am so excited for the for the podcast um, this coming weekend. So excited. We're going to have Dave and Tiber both on together. I'm going to be helping Lita co-host. This is going to be so much fun. So excited. Cannot wait for this. Well, I mean, I'm going to have to, but it's going to be a lot of fun. They have both been longtime community supporters. Cannot wait to hear this story. Alright. So we're slowly making some progress here. See how far we get. Because we've been going about an hour. About. We've gotten almost two sections of green filled in. Almost. is going to be super big, but that's okay. Get some glue on him and tuck him over on himself. Get this. Oh, actually that guy was a little, a little big too. That's okay. Here, little guy. Oh wait. Oh, you're attached to somebody. Okay, never mind. 
here, not quite so little. Surprise. I thought you had been a little guy that had escaped there. Not the case, apparently, not the case. Yeah, so we definitely have to stop at Robbie's the next time we're coming back through the keys. We're gonna have to bring a little a little mini crab tank set up. Cause that was amazing. There was some they had for sale as big as your fist. I'd never seen them that big. That was exciting. I'd never known they did that. Because that won't be so bad. I mean, they can travel pretty well. They should be able to make it just fine home without too much trouble. All right. We still have a little bit ways to go before we get to these two, so I think we'll... See, I don't have a bar there. I had planned on putting one, and then I decided not to. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that section just yet. Another vine that's right in the middle there. No, don't fall over. Thank you. I thought I was going to fall into my drink. I'm like, no! Let's not have a huge mess, please. I mean, I'm good at making messes. So good. Such a klutz. But, you know. Let's try, try not to, uh have any massive spillage here, please. All right, remember we're gonna rinse the brush. This is just tacky glue, it's nothing special. Um, it's not toxic, it's, it's fine. At least I don't believe it's toxic, it doesn't say it's toxic. Says it conforms to ASTMD 4236. So I think we're okay. Yes, it does say non toxic on the label. All right. Don't you be starting to cause trouble there, friend be having any of that now. Yeah, stay put. Uh, let's tap that guy in. Now this guy's going to be a little bit longer. I feel like maybe we can, yes, get you in there. So getting my angle right is a little difficult from from this direction, but I think we're okay. I don't think we really have to start turning till we get to over here. Alright. Time for some fallout boy. What is this song? Um, I don't know. I can't see my. Uh, I my songs know what you did in the dark. Is our current song there? Right. 
ashes. Okay. Oh, I'm like, where'd it go? <laughs> I'm trying to grab it out of my finger and I dropped it. Like, it was no longer in my hand. Okay. You said it, and I think we're gonna have to de-gunk our stylus here in just a moment. To get some of that build-up scraped away. So, I'm about three bars in on the Rogue. The Rogue might just hit 60 on Wednesday's stream, you guys. So fingers crossed for that. Because I am more than ready to be done with that one. Just, oh my goodness. And then we'll only have one in Bastion for like a week. Maybe two. Because the priest isn't quite ready yet. Priest will only be hitting 49 this week, hopefully. So. And then they still have to go through um, the maw. So, unless I save them to check on the maw skip, which well, we could do that. It is entirely possible that I might just sit them for a few. We're gonna have to do some some live testing when that comes out before we tell you guys to go ahead and use it, or at least tell the non-irons to go ahead and use it. But PTR is looking promising. Just have to hope that what we've seen on PTR is gonna carry over to live, because sometimes it doesn't. So we are cautiously optimistic. I mean, I guess I could make a, well see, I don't know if trial account's gonna accurately tell me what I need to know. I might need to have an active account. So yeah, we might sit that priest when she gets to 50 and um, see what happens with her. Okay. Alrighty, tuck these things into here as best as we can so we might have a couple little tiny gaps in this one but I still think we'll be we'll be okay and that one that one needed a little more manhandling to get into that spot At now. Uh, just a little speck of glue. I wasn't sure if that was a fuzz. A little difficult to tell. Alright. Need to get one more. I keep getting glue on the tip of the side of my thumb there. And because I keep twisting my hand in that sort of uh, direction, I need to make sure I keep that off of there. 
else we're gonna be gluing our hand to everything and that's gonna just start ripping everybody up off of our canvas here and that's not gonna do us any favors whatsoever All right. We've got some Everclear on this playlist. Sunflowers is a good song. I like Sunflowers. You have your your root ready, but boy, it's getting tough going over the sea. Yeah, it is. It is. My uh. My patience is deeply waning in Bastion, and I'm struggling. The idea of getting X number of bloodthirsties through sounded good on paper. Um, the amount of time I have spent in Bastion in these steam effing <laughs> grinding loops repeatedly back to back I'm like ready to just throw my mouse at the screen and be like I'm done but um, <laughs> I'm trying to persevere no one is making me do this this is my own thing um, the mass pulling leather farmers that seem to be mostly troll bear druids um, are starting to really get under my skin every time I go out there. I'm running into someone that is just pulling all of the mobs. So I have that that I'm fighting against plus my own sanity. Um, it's not easy. It is not easy. Um, iron's a little bit more stressful for me. I do have an iron. I just haven't... Oh, shit. I gotta do a write-up. I forgot about that. Um, I didn't forget, but I keep pushing it to the back of my mind because I don't have to have it up until Friday, but I gotta do that. Um, but, uh, I'm just... Iron is way too stressful for me. Like, my one iron will be making an appearance on stream again shortly um, with Brewfest coming. And I'll probably do Harvest Festival the same time I do Brewfest. So that day might be a little bit longer of a stream. So if I get up early enough, we might start early. But um, it's tough because I'm also running a priest iron. So there's not a whole lot of shit that I can kill. At my level, I have to kind of find things I can do. Um, the higher you get, the tougher it is. I'm not totally sat in the wrong spot. Okay, that's good. But, um, you know, it's, it's also a learning process. And I tried iron repeatedly. Repeatedly. And, like, I was only making it to when max was um 110 and, and then 120 um i was only making it to like stranglethorn when you were doing your traditional leveling and you didn't have crummy timer or, or any of that and you were just you know going through the motions and and i just i could not seem to get past a certain level iron wise and then i started to and like suddenly my highest level iron no, my highest level iron at that time was in the 20s. And I was like, well, let me try a different challenge. And then I tried Bloodthirsty. And I don't know, like... I, I definitely had my, uh... My missteps on Bloodthirsty. But it made me want to just jump back in and go again. Because I didn't have to worry about the quests. I could just kill stuff and once I figured out through trial and error where I could kill stuff I don't know one day it just clicked and then suddenly I had a level 80 bloodthirsty that I accidentally murdered in two hits from an elite because I didn't realize the elite was gonna pull but 
having known that I could get that high on a priest, no less, in white gear, because it was right before the transition. Well, no, I had just started to put green gear on. Um, it was when we still had to be in white gear as bloodthirsties, because we didn't always have the green gear option. The green gear option um, only became a thing when Legion came in. Um, but I had like made it to high 70s before, maybe 270, before green gear became a thing. And I was like, you know what? I can do this. And, um, and finally things just started to click. It took me quite a while, but you know, like every death was like, okay, I should not have done that. Or why did I do that after the fact? It's definitely made me a more cautious player, and it does take time to adjust your playstyle to a um, challenger way of thought. Because you definitely can't approach it the same way you would as if you were on a normal, that it didn't matter if you fucked up a pull or died or took on too many mobs. Um, you know, you would just laugh and get your body or, you know, be like, God damn it. And then, you know, go get your body and, and move on. It, it's not, there's a little more finality if you die. Um, there's a fine art of being able to zone and play a challenger <laughs> that takes some time to learn. And I will say sometimes I will stop moving on my challengers if I'm talking on stream just because the brain needs to go in so many different directions and sometimes it's better if I take a moment to finish the thought before I um, before I start to, to move on or make a decision with my challenger. Because I didn't start out streaming my, my challenge runs. Um, that came later, but um, you know, it's definitely has a bit of a learning curve. To, uh, to get used to it. I've been doing this for years. Um, challenge tunes. Four years? Might be longer? Um, I really started to get... I tried once or twice in Caddo before Stone had, had taken over. Um running the things. Um, I really didn't get back into it till sometime in WAD um, when uh, I really wasn't that in love with the expansion. I'd already gotten my main through and um, kind of working on an alt but I kind of wasn't feeling it and I decided to give that a go when I realized we weren't going to be raiding or anything anymore in uh, the guild, so well, most of the guild had, guild had left to go do their own things or, you know, because of drama that was stupid that shouldn't have happened anyway, but I was like, okay, well, I'll come back and give this another go. And I don't know, Bloodthirsty just worked better for me. I still keep trying on an iron, but I don't run that many irons. I have like, I think through happenstance, I have three. One of them I'm not really leveling. Um, one of them I was going to try to level, but then, you know, I wanted to work on my bloodthirsty project. So that took a definite back seat. Um, I had a level 30. Well, no, that's not true. Um, I had a high level... Priest Iron before level Swish came in. So when Max was still 120. Um, they got bumped to level 30. So they were working in Outlands um, before level Swish happened. So um, I'm going to put you there in hopes I can find you again. 
So, um, after Level Squish came in, Sir had been talking about how he was trying to level with Priest and he was having problems and he said that he went one spec and I'm like, oh, okay. So, um, I forgot I don't have to clip in this section. So I was like, hmm. So I made an iron there after level squish just to see, you know, where he was having difficulty to try to maybe try to help him, but he levels faster than, than I was leveling, so that was kind of pointless. Um, and then he ended up switching specs anyhow, but that's how Iron and Nisi came about. Um, and she's 50, which is the highest iron I've, well, the highest iron I ever had was 80. Four? I don't know. It was it either just hit eighty or I was in Pandaria. Maybe I was almost to eighty five. Um before they died doing the quest where I didn't know that Mop was going to do what it did and I was really kind of mad, but that had been my highest iron ever was in the 80s. Um, but now this one is 50, and I'm holding off taking her into the maw because um, a lot of the regular iron players were saying wait to go through the maw until like 51, 52. Um, it'll be a lot easier to deal with, and it's like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do in the meantime? Oh, you hunt for trusts, and I'm like. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> okay. Except half of the treasure chests are guarded. Um, and a lot of the people are like, oh, just hunt for chests. They're running, like, rogues that can sap the guards. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I can't get, like, half of these chests because I'm on a priest. And, you know, they don't have crowd control. They have fear. And they have chain um, undead, and uh, or shackle undead, excuse me, and uh, fear only makes them run for a certain number of seconds, and then they run back to you. <clears throat> Not exactly what I consider crowd control, and um, and you're in combat once you hit fear, so that's fun. And then the mob also has the chance to bring friends with it if it runs into any other mobs in its mad dash to get away from you. So, yeah, I don't really consider that a, a good thing. Um, and then, you know, the shackle undead, well, it has to be an undead, number one, and not a whole lot of those in a BFA. And, uh, I think think it may still put you in combat like I don't think you can mount and, and get away you certainly don't have a stealth option you certainly don't have sap I mean you don't have have even the ability to root or sheep so that's a little bit difficult um, to deal with so I can't really go after many of the chests there's some I can get Especially if another player has come through and cleared out a bunch of mobs, but I can't always bank on that happening. So she's a little bit into 50. Um, I'm kind of hoping that she can use the mall skip just because I'm just not really wanting to take her into there if I can help it. I mean, it, it might get me a little bit of XP, but... I mean, at that point, I'm going to be a bit higher than that stuff anyhow, so, you know, is it really going to matter? Probably not. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see what happens there, and then once I get into the uh, Shadowlands, um, I'm going to have world quests that are safe for me to do, so there's not that many of those in a given day. And uh, I only level her, like, I only have time blocked to level 
um, to really work on her like one day a week. So I don't do um, I don't do pre-stream work on the irons. We just we shoot from the hip and we go. We don't do any any pre-work on them. Um, the bloodthirsties I have to because some of those like it's like oh she leveled up like four bloodthirsties in two hours cool uh yeah but did you see how far through the level i was when we started um they only had like three bars or two bars or a bar of xp left to fill in um so i spend hours throughout the week getting them ready for stream and i do mean hours um getting through bastion is very time consuming um, depending on the class that you're running that rogue I think last level was upwards of 10 hours of play time so it's it's tough um, and then you know when I'm fighting the leather farmers on top of it they're making it even uh, dragging out even out further. So it's it's very frustrating. And you know, I understand that the leather farmers are trying to make their gold and everything and I try not to be so salty about it, but for God's sakes, go to a different zone. You're level 60 and can fly. Like, why are you here? Like, go to Revendreth or and you know farm the bats or whatever and get, try and get a pet to drop the cell at the same time or or go to effing Ardenweald where there's all kinds of densely packed things to skin like why are you here I've like done nothing end game with uh, my my 160 <laughs> technically the the one uh, character that's my main who kind of became an alt this expansion because my my hunter is now my gatherer and I was trying to make money for for some tokens because it looked like I wasn't going to have money to um, to pay for my subscription for a couple of months and I had been hardcore trying to, to make some funds um and then we decided to go a different route and then someone gifted me some time um, but uh, you know they ended up getting leveled first and I've been having a really hard time getting back to my quote unquote original main because um, they took threads <laughs> and now I'm like why why did you do this to yourself? You hate world questing. And I was, I don't know, I guess I thought it was going to be something different than what it turned out being, but joke's on me. But I should be good on WoW time now until... when sometime in 2022 I feel like maybe January no not January April I don't remember when my next billing date is but I need to check on tokens I haven't checked on them since everything got weird in game so I really should I have a little bit of cash in game. Not a whole lot. Hi, kitty. Is that Littles? Hi, Littles. Kitten rubbing on my knees. No, no, kitten. Little, little, you're gonna get stuck on my chair again. Little bits. Littles. Little bits. Ah. Thank you. We'll be getting in trouble. You do that behind me and then I can't turn my chair to unhook you. She's so strange. Do you know how sometimes, if you have a cat, you know, when they go to sharpen their claws on a piece of furniture, sometimes they'll get a little hung up 
Um, well, since she's still, I don't think she's quite a year old yet. Um, she hasn't quite figured out how to completely work her claws. She, she's getting there. She also has much more curved claws than most of our cats. Yeah, I will say that too. She, she so. tends to get her nails hooked into things like the rug and where we have rug and, um, and when she's trying to sharpen her claws on her chairs, she gets her nails stuck and she can't get them out right away. And so she kind of hangs there for a minute and we're trying to like grab her foot to like lift it up to unhook it. And then she starts screeching like we're murdering her because we touched her feet. Um, we're trying to work with her we, we try to keep her nails cut as short as we can, number one, to prevent that from happening if we're not home or asleep or something. Um, but I'm also working with her by when she does have a cuddly moment where I'm trying to rub the top of her feet and her, her pads and just get her used to being touched because she also was fighting us when we were trying to um to cut her nails she didn't want us touching her at all so i mean i i contribute some of that to um to the fact that we rescued her from the car wash um down the street when uh she was still very very much kitteny i think maybe just finished weaning maybe yeah, I'd say maybe just finished weaning. Uh, we found her. She could like fit in in our hand, like one, one handed. We could palm this cat. Um, and uh, we found her in the middle. Well, not the middle of the night, but it was like ten o'clock at night, running around the car wash, screeching. In a panic. Um, and we weren't quite sure what had happened. Um, she was starving. We saw her trying to eat dead leaves off the ground. I think it was like October, November or something when we found her and we had just lost two of our older cats. And um, it was kind of like a gift kitty from heaven that just uh, appeared in front of us and we're like, uh, there's a cat. <laughs> Where did the cat come from? So um, we were, we had, Placed a strict rule that we weren't going to uh, to replace the two that had um, had to be uh, put down because they were in really bad shape. Um, and uh, and then this kitten appears, and we're like, what? <laughs> Um, it had been a couple months after the fact, but we, it was still hitting us both pretty hard. We're like, there's, there's a kitty here. And like Russell said, as soon as he saw the look on my face, he's like, oh shit, now I'm gonna have to argue with her about not keeping it. And, um, and then when I had run back to the house to try to get some cat food, he had, cause we're, we're not that far from the car wash and um, we were the only ones down there. We were trying to get her to come to us. Um, he said while I was gone, she tried to eat a dead leaf and he's like, that did it for him. And he was already planning on, on keeping her um, if she didn't belong to anybody. Cause right, right at that moment, we were more worried that somebody had lost her. And we're, we, well, we didn't know it was a her at the time. Um, we had to take her, to, when we took her to the vet, they, they said, no, definitely a her. And we're like, okay. Um, but it was just so bizarre how things happened. We finally, um, we were trying to coax her to get close enough to us so we could grab her. Um, she would never come quite close enough to be in grabbing range. And we're like, damn it. And, uh, we had been out there like almost 45 minutes at this point. And she tucked herself in a hiding spot um, where one of the garbage cans, like there was these brick things, um, like these little brick boxes that they had the, the garbage can sitting in so they didn't blow over or anything. Um, 
and uh, the um, shit. You're you're just you're gonna behave. You're kind of. I guess that's good enough. Where is my? So um, she tucked herself into this like brick container where they held the garbage cans and. We're like, we went and I think we grabbed some gloves because we had had a bad <laughs> interaction with a feral kitten before. So um, we weren't quite sure it, how feral she was. And uh, we didn't know if she was going to try to sink her teeth into us if we tried to grab her. So we were being a little hesitant. And um, we're like, okay, that's fine. Let's grab her. Um, so we pulled the trash can out. And we realized, oh, there's like a tiny crack on, on the sides of this thing to get back under this like concrete box. And we're like, if she goes in there, we're not getting her out because we can't access it in there. And she was small enough to fit in this slit. So we're like, shit. So um, we grabbed an extra piece of cardboard that was laying in this dirty hole. And uh, Russell reached down to grab her. I was trying to block the... Um, her escape route with this cardboard and um, we're just making a paper snake and then we're gonna twist it on itself to make a snail shell we're gonna wrap the snake around itself basically in a little circle um, so Russell was reaching down to grab her and the second he grabbed her she was like okay she didn't fight us she started to purr while we were nervously trying to quickly walk her back to the house and keep a death grip on her so that the traffic going by didn't scare her to jumping she purred the whole way back to the house um at first we didn't think she was too flea ridden um, we got her in the bathroom because you know this is a cat but we don't know about shots and everything and we already have a cat population so you know we didn't want them getting sick we were pretty sure she hadn't had any shots and she was so tiny um, so we filled the bathroom sink with, with water and we were going to give her a bath and we gave her a quick bath and um, we're like oh you know we're surprised she didn't have more fleas and then as I'm telling her dry I'm seeing the fleas on the towel and I'm like a uh, correction they were just hiding we need to do a more thorough wash so we put her back in the sink and then we got a whole bunch of fleas off of her because we're like oh shit we don't want a flea explosion with our guys um, we started searching Facebook on a couple of the town Facebook pages that the residents put together. We looked on the pound page. We were not finding um, anybody saying they had lost a cat, uh, a kitten. And we thought it was kind of strange. Um, and I think we held on to her for a couple of days before we made a vet appointment. And um, we had already decided at that point that if nobody said that they were missing her, that we decided we were going to keep her. And, uh, we now have a little tiny vampire kitten. She's not as bitey as she had been. She still likes to, she likes to love bite, which is kind of hilarious because the older cat that we, um, had to, one of the older cats that we had to put down was a biter. He loved to bite toes. And she, she'll like walk up to my feet and just lay down and bite me. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why? That was unnecessary and uncalled for. And she just lays there and purrs even harder when she starts biting you. And I'm like, okay. She does like my mom, though, which I find hilarious. She bites my mom for blood. <laughs> and I shouldn't laugh, but uh, those that know... 
any sort of history uh, with the parental units, and you, you might understand why I find that funny. But I've not always been on the best of terms with her. Alright. So now we're gonna put our orange ring. That house is gonna be crowded soon, or more crowded, because mother in law is gonna be coming back soon. Probably within the next month. And um, she's actually going to have to stay here this time because she's not going to be able to stay with her other sister because apparently the one sister moved or something and she only built a room big enough for the other sister. It, it's a huge family. Um, there's like four sisters I think. So the three sisters have been hanging out for a while and we're just doing more of the little sneak roll-ups. So, it's gonna be quite crowded. Once again. Why is this being silly? Like it was rolling, but I was wanting to unfurl. And then we have a ring of green to go. Well, light green. Am I going to need to... I feel like this one needs just a kiss of glue to it. It's just not cooperating. And I've got all the little glue peelies all over my fingers. Mm. Making an even bigger mess. Hey, Mrs. Rock Guru. How are you? This guy's a little too small to do anything with. Hope your day is going well. Alright, get off of my finger please, thank you. Kind of squish that one into there. Our orange, our uh, glue fill orange ring is drying a little bit faster than I was expecting it to. My stomach says hello too. Doing some Legion stuff. Nice. Alright, that color we don't need yet. Very nice. Hell yeah, I'll be glad when I get that rogue done, cause 
I need, excuse me, I need to not be running too for a little bit. In Bastion. My sanity is quickly waning. What little of it there's left. But hey, we've got holidays coming up. We're entering the holiday busy challenger season. So we've got Harvest Festival is kind of a nothing holiday. Um, it's a quest, basically. So I, it's kind of... But, um, you know, there's some food on the table that has some, some good stats on it. Or at least there was. I have to double check how it's going to be because this is the first Harvest Festival since Level Squish. So I need to make sure that they didn't change anything. Um, but I should have that article up on Friday at some point. I don't think I'm going to be able to post it ahead of time. Oh, excuse me. Because um, I need to check it. And I don't think it goes live till like sometime mid Friday morning. So I probably won't be awake yet. Yes, yeah, so we've got Brewfest coming up right after. Like it goes um it goes Harvest Festival on, on this Friday. Um that Sunday is Pirates Day, which I don't recommend taking a challenge or two. Um, because sometimes there's like fights and stuff that break out down there. And then I think is it that Monday or Tuesday? Brewfest starts. So it's um, it's all in a line. Uh, so it's going to be a busy week. So I honestly would wait to do Harvest until you go to do Brewfest, unless you're on a pacifist. Um, if you're on a pacifist, I would get Harvest out of the way. When there's less people around. That's just me. In my overly cautious, timid littleness. But... Um, you know. And then we've got some, some nice Brewfest stuff going on. Uh, Bloodthirsties can't participate in any of it um, coming up, but, but you know, your irons, your pacifists, and your your other challenges as well, like your green man, your working man, um, your tins, they can all participate in, in Harvest and Brewfest. Um, now, even though we're not able to track green and working man right now um we discussed it and we're still going to set up the holiday write-ups as if we were um like we're gonna still give you the information um on how to approach the holidays with do's and don'ts for the challenges that can't be tracked right now just in case we are able to get the tracking up um and we're able to get ca older characters added or, you know, just as a personal challenge, just so you have an idea of what you can and can't do. Um, so we, we are still going to, we will add a stipulation in saying that, you know, even though these challenges can't be tracked, um, I haven't worked out the full wording yet in my brain, but, um, you know, even though we're currently not tracking these challenges, um, here is the information if you would like to continue working on these challengers as a personal challenge this is how this is what these challengers can do uh, basically i haven't worked out the wording yet as you can tell um but you know we're still going to include the the information for them but yeah it's going to be a busy couple of weeks for me because then um i think we get like a couple weeks reprieve and then we hop right into hollow's end sometime in October. So um, we've got a, we go from having like a couple of months of nothing. So like, I think the last was um, uh, Midsummer Fire Festival, which was when, um, was that mid June? End of June, something like that. I think it was the end of June. And, um, and then we didn't have anything the entire month of August. And, um, I think for most of July. I think Midsummer bled into July just a little bit, like just the first couple of days. But now it's like bam, 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 holiday, holiday, holiday. And I'm like, oh, I've got so much shit I've got to do. So um, for those that don't know, I do the holiday write-ups for Wild Challenges along with most 
of the max level stuff. I forgot we still needed to do our green ring. I was about to put the glue down for our next uh, dark green section. So um, yeah, it's gonna be pretty busy. And then we go from Hollow's End into uh, Pilgrim Fest. And then from Pilgrim Fest, we go into um, Winter Vale. So it's very, very busy coming up. Like most of the holidays are the end of the year. Hopefully I don't have to do too much to these holidays, but we're going to have to see how how level squish has affected them and kind of go from there, really. Hopefully it hasn't affected them too much, but we'll see. Alright, so we're going to grab our, our lime green now. You weren't doing anything with Tyler tonight, right? He's Not that I'm aware of. Okay, I didn't know if you would talk to him in the meantime. Yeah, there's no kind of rush or nothing. Okay. Our friend Tyler has the vid. He did get vaccinated, though, so we're hoping he'll be okay. And like I said the other day, we haven't actually been in contact with him except through Discord. He doesn't live that far away, but I don't think we've seen him physically in almost a year, <laughs> if not a little bit more. Well, it's been more than that. We haven't seen him since before COVID kicked off. Mm, true. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it was a while before, no less. Yeah, I can't remember why he came up. I think he was picking something up that came here with his name on it still. It might have been mail or something. He was also just in the area. Okay. So decided to stop by. And the doggos enjoyed seeing their uncle, Uncle Tyler, because Tyler did uh, live with us for a little while. And we're still having to keep an eye on Momo, though we did get a happy butt wiggle yesterday, or the day before, day before. So we're, he's getting up willingly for snackids. Um, we do think we need to get an area rug, an extra area rug in here, um, just to help him feel a little more stable on his feet. But what's going on might be a permanent problem. He is no longer a young man and is not going to bounce back from it very well, so. We're just going to have to treat him with kid gloves and try to get him to treat himself with kid gloves. Because once he gets excited, he starts wanting to be extra bouncy and we're like, no, no, easy, easy, slow down. So if the camera angle looks a little different, uh, I did raise my monitor up a little bit further, maybe an, an inch ish, about an inch. Um, A, to try to help calm the neck demons that have been plaguing me this past week, um, and B, so that maybe I have a chance of seeing if the one cat jumps on my desk and sits right in front of my monitor. It might need to be a little bit higher for that, but with the way my neck is, I have to gradually raise up. I can't just jump into... What? What? No. Sorry, Zuzu was getting all wiggly at me for some reason. Suddenly. Out of nowhere. He's sitting on the bed, pouting, and then staring at me occasionally. 
Like, Mommy, why are you talking to yourself? I don't understand. Stop talking to yourself. And um, last night was the first night that Zuzu wasn't in the bedroom with Russell since all of this started with Momo. So he had a full night of mommy cuddles under the blanket, stretched out, taken up half the bed, and he didn't get to miss breakfast this morning, at least I don't think he did. Because he kept waking Russell up at ridiculous hours when he heard my mom up because he didn't want to miss breakfast. Well, ridiculous hours for Russell because, you know, we don't sleep and, uh, Sometimes it's not unheard of for us to not be able to fall asleep till 5 or 6 in the morning. So, Doggo demanding to be released from the bedroom at 8 <laughs> so that he gets his breakfast is a little silly. Not silly for him, but we view it as silly. So it's like, eh, Russell was tired, so I had the Doggo last night. Since Momo seems to be moving a little bit, he'll get up to pee on his potty pad, but he doesn't want to go outside in his leash. And I'm like, why? Russell starts talking to him and he starts shaking. He's been like traumatized about Russell taking him to the vet. So every time he, Russell starts talking to him, he's like, oh god, I'm going to the vet. It's like, no, we're just talking to you. It's fine. So we have some things that we need to work through with the Momo. We feel bad, but he doesn't seem to be in too much pain right now. Not that we can tell. Like, he's not whining or anything, but he doesn't want to get on the bed. He just wants to stay in his little doggy bed, and if that's where he's happy, okay, that's fine. He has my favorite blanket, which... I don't know what we're going to do come winter because that's my bed blanket. Um, we might have to find money to get another blanket for me because I don't think Momo's going to give it up and I don't want to take it away from him. So that's going to be a problem, I think. Or the husband's going to have to share his with me. But that also may depend on if the mother-in-law is here or they find room for her at the sisters because last winter she wasn't really here. She was here but she wasn't. She was like one state over at the one sister's house. So, Though I think we might still have to put some ground rules down about Christmas celebrations. which she's not going to be happy about. Things are still being silly. People are still being silly. And um, I know the one sister that they don't... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Associate much with is one of those silly people. So... Um, we, we may have some ground rules that we have to put in place. Like, okay, dog just went running for some reason. Um, so we may have to put some ground rules in place again for this Christmas. Whether she likes it or not. All right. You make sure that they don't get any of that. Sorry, my mom made pot roast or something. And she puts a packet of onion soup mix in with it. 
and the dogs cannot have that. Onion is bad for them. Onion can do very bad things. As it is, I had to get into an argument with my dad the other day. My dad loves his rubber bands. Has them around to everything. Has to have them around this. Has to have them around that. I'm like, I will get you a plastic box to put them in. So that way you don't lose it. I'll get you a plastic box for every single thing that has a rubber band on it. I have to have my rubber bands. I'm like, you can't. The, uh, a couple of the cats, um, like the rubber bands because they think they're like my coated hair ties that they can't ingest, but they will go up and chew the rubber bands off of the things that he has them on. And then they run around with them and they play with them and then they try to eat them. And I, like, I had to, you know, argue with him and explain to him he can't have rubber bands because they keep trying to eat them and I can't have a cat needing emergency surgery that I don't have the money for because he had to have his rubber band. Yeah, if that dog got in the eye, gonna flip my shit up. Oh, he's paying for it. Mm -hmm. Um, she knows not to give them that pot roast, right? Because all the onion soup mix in it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because I caught them trying to eat it, not just chase it. So I'm like, mm, no, no. What more do you want today? Hmm? Well, he, he might need food motivation, but I might have to be there for that, so. It'll be, it'll be easier if you are. Momo seems to take being leashed by me a little bit less traumatically than being leashed by Russell. Because I didn't go to the vet with them when they went. So, all right, um, I think we'll do this one too while we're here. Give that one a chance to, to set up before we start working around it. Probably be a good idea. That's, um, yeah, so if, uh, if he's insistent on using those damn rubber bands and a cat gets ill, he's gonna have to pay for their surgery because we're tapped out. Like, you wouldn't believe how tapped out we are. As it is, we're trying to survive on like $500 a month, which is extremely difficult. We're only able to do that because the mother-in-law is paying the house bills like she's supposed to be. I think we're covering one bill. But it's both the dogs having vet emergencies right after each other was with like no space in between was really rough. Although Momos wasn't really well Momos was a planned surgery after the bump got to be a bit more of a problem on his neck. Um but Zuzu had been sick right before that surgery. And he had a ginormous vet bill. And, um, then Momo's surgery. And then Momo slipped and fell, trying to get on the bed. That wasn't too ginormous, but it was definitely, definitely still hurt. At least we got our, our house taxes are paid. So we're good. We don't have to worry about any liens. Um, those got paid. So we're, we're good for this year. We had to pay them this month because we weren't going to have the money in time next month if we waited. It's just the way things lined up, this was the month to do it. They're, they're due next month. They have to be done, done by next month. But um, And we're going to start a little bit early 
putting the money away for next year so we're not quite so stressed about it. So I think next month we're going to start putting the money back in our drawer again. Which is kind of funny because I think the mother-in-law only contributed $40. Maybe. 60 at the most. Out of like 400 and <laughs> and uh, 20 something dollars, 60 something dollars. Okay, look you. You can stop being fussy. I mean, not like she had a whole shit ton of money either, but she's been too busy um, hanging out in New Hampshire with the other sister that's up there. doing silly things with her money. Do, 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 do. Who is this? Sorry, I'm trying to figure out who I'm listening to. You guys can't hear it. Who is this? Oh, Three Days Grace. I haven't heard the song in a while, so I was not placing the band. Like, it sounded familiar, I mean, obviously, because it's on my playlist, but... Just it wasn't that immediately familiar, because I don't listen to them that often. All right, what time is it? All right, we're two hours in. I kind of feel a little bad that we didn't get further in this two hours, but at the same time, we did get one of those put in place and we're working on this one so I mean I guess it's not so bad I mean things do take time to work through and uh, we got what I think three sections in over here sorry I've got a little bit of extra glue on my fingertip us obsessively scratching off because I could see it and it was distracting me. Alright. This guy. Put you away to... No, 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 no. I think I twisted these guys a little bit tighter. Like, yeah, sometimes the crunchy tissue paper, which this is, you can hear the crunch in it. Um, it's crunchier than some of the others. It doesn't have that soft texture. Um, the crunchier ones can be a little bit more fussy. Alright, we're just gonna, we're gonna press down on that for a minute just to make sure that that's gonna 
not unfurl on us all at once because that that could be a problem just a little bit okay so We're gonna need more of our orange that we've got sitting over here, ready to go. We're gonna have to twist some more orange paper here soon, I think. Some of these orange guys are a little small to, uh, to try to twist up in a circle. Do you need me to help you real quick? Nah, if he's knocking it up, he's knocking it up. I think he's halfway up for nugs, to be perfectly honest. Oh, okay. All right. He wants his chicken nugget. You won't get up for a nugs time. Will you get up for a nug? Will you get up for a nug? I really think that's why we were halfway up. Yeah. <laughs> he's very food motivated. Last night we had to get him up, because I wanted him to at least go outside once. I mean, he has his potty pads, but... I wanted him to physically get up and walk around a little bit. Um, so we had to entice him to get up with chicken nuggets. And then um, while Russell was holding the chicken nugget, I had to get his leash on. And I was doing it in the opposite direction that I normally put it on him in. So that was a bit of a challenge. And then once I got him into that, we had to carefully steer him past his dog bed. Because that's where he was trying to beeline to. And uh, steer him towards the door. To um, get him out to pee. Hey, hon. I'm yeah. pretty sure he's just being a lazy puppy now. Because he's running to and from the nug station. <laughs> So I think he's just being lazy and cautious, which I'm not going to discourage. No, no, that's fine. We, I, th I think he's a lot better than we think. I'll have to, uh, we'll have to entice him to stand up to get his leash on later to go potty. To at least get him to, to move and get used to that not every outside is a vet thing and not every outside is an owie thing either. But uh, he's a very food motivated little guy. Like, I miss having a big dog, but the little dogs are a lot easier to, um, to handle when they have a mobility issue. Because, you know, a little 20-pound dog I can pick up. Well, the way Momo is built, I can pick him up without issue. Um, Zuzu is a little bit more chunky. He's, he's still only, like, 20, he's under 25 pounds, but still, the way he's built, he's a lot shorter and he's a lot tankier. He's got a little bit more of the corgi build to him than Momo does. Because when we went to get them, they said, oh yeah, corgi mixes. And I'm like, okay, like the corgi mix was like from a generation, two generations prior. And I'm like, and that was a mix as well. And I'm like, right. So there's really not much corgi left in here. But at the same time, they were terribly cute. And they were free and I didn't like the way that the lady's little girl was manhandling the dogs she was like picking them up 
or trying to because she was like three or four and the lady wasn't correcting her and then she was like half dropping them and I'm like <laughs> yeah let's take two of these and we took the two that didn't look alike because they had two that looked identical to each other and then they had um, the ones that we took um, that looked very different from the other two and I was like yeah let's let's go with these two And they were so tiny when we got them. They were like kitten sized almost. Because I remember we went from there to PetSmart to pick up some things because I didn't have any doggy things here. And uh, I remember holding Momo and he was like nuzzled into my, uh, my neck. He was so tiny. He was also starting to make my neck itch because they had been in a bunch of hay or straw or something. So I was like, oh, we need to get you guys a bath. I think they were actually born this month. Like September. All right. I keep losing track of how old they are, so I keep telling people different years until I like see a Facebook memory pop up, and then I'm like, oh, they're only that old. I keep thinking they're older than they are. But we'll see, like I'm super nervous with how, with their age because, you know, I've had big dogs for so long. And the, the bigger purebreds um, tend to not live as long. So I have no idea what kind of time frame we're looking at with these guys. So I'm like super nervous because I'm like, oh, I know they're getting older. Alright. Can't remember how old the last little dog I had was. That was a mix. I want to say like 12. But he also had a medical problem, so like. Like, um, he was starting to have bladder issues. And then things just went south from there. Um, so it is a peafowl, or a peacock. The, um, the reference image that we are using, that's not the reference image. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. <sighs> okay, I'm in the right folder. Let's see if I actually put it in the folder. Where are you? I really should name the reference images. Or you know what? We will we'll do it this way. Go to my downloads folder. Is it no, is it this one? 
that one. So there's our, whoop. This is our reference image. that we based our piece off of. <laughs> and we are using tissue paper to, um, to put it all together. I did a, I painted, I sort of painted a color key onto here and, um, just so I knew where colors were going. And uh, now we're following that so we don't always have to have the reference image up. But it is a peafowl peacock, however you want to refer to it as. And I'm sorry I have them sitting sideways, but it meant that I had less reaching I had to do across my work area. Peabody, what are you doing? How about we don't climb into there? Come on, Come on, Cats are yeah. being silly. What did you do? Oh, my ankle's just hurt for some reason. I can't have everybody crippled in this house at once. That's not going to work. So there's our ring of orange. Now, these guys were a little bit smaller, so they kind of wanted to undo themselves a little bit more. Not as bad as the blue one, but um, I think we'll be able to cover the bulk, bulk of those um, spaces with um, the green. Alright, so we're going to grab our glue. He knows he's being bad, too, because the second your chair moved, he took off. Silly cat. I'll tell ya. These cats get into so much trouble. Silly Peabody. They should have a Peabody channel badge. With a little kitty top hat and monocle. We'll rinse off our glue brush, blot that dry. All right, so let's move on to our lime green again. If I can find one that looks big enough for me to spin. There we go. Let's get our next layer of, our next ring, really, of color in there. Alright. And for those that are new here, we archive most, most, not all most of the live streams over on the YouTube channel. It takes a few days for them to get over there. But most of them make it over there. There was a period of time where I wasn't remembering to archive them, so there are some that are missing. 
there will be a time jump on some of, I think on the WoW Challenges playlist, there's a big time gap. But, um... Ah! No! Well, that kind of turned into a donut shape. There we go. Uh oh. Just went flying. I lost somebody. I don't know where they went. Might have been the dark green again. Alright. That's fine. We've, we've got a good amount of that. That should be okay if we lose a couple. Alright. So we're just gonna twist this in a circle. Well, I guess we're really spinning it in a circle. It's not really twisting. Twisting is this way. Okay. So again, we're gonna take our little paper sneaky guy. We're going to just kind of curl him around himself. It's difficult to see on the camera. But that's how I kind of think of, think of how like you do like a ribbon rose. Similar to that. And um, this particular shade of green is much softer so you don't really hear it crinkling. For some reason this color was a softer texture. I find it fascinating how different colors have different textures to them. I'm like, well is there something in the dye that that just made that particular sheet much softer or um or was it just the you know the batch of paper itself i've always wondered about that sorry these are all kind of small guys so they're a little bit harder to uh to spin We will get that guy in there. All right. And the YouTube channel is the same name as the Twitch channel. Um, it's just going to be Nisi BGN. And um, everything is basically playlisted over there, so the WoW Challenges stuff has its own playlist. Um, it's kind of mushed together now. They It used to be separate um, playlists between Bloodthirsty and uh, Iron Man, but those are now on the same playlists. And uh, that playlist is just going to be all things about challenges. We've got the art stuff that is on the Nisi Paints playlist. And um, we've got the new Minecraft playlist from the live stream the other day. That one is called, I think, uh, Minecraft Desert City is what we're we named that one and I did get some more work done on that clearing out um, some real estate for us to work with I managed to get another stonemason traded up to I think an acceptable color I might try to do maybe one more 
um, just to see what color option they give me just to see I'm not completely sold on the color that they gave me but I was like eh. I don't know what the next stonemason might or might not give me and I might hate it so I mean it kind of works with all of the colors involved. Sorry, my sh chair shook and I didn't know what the hell was going on. A cat run, ran by me. I was being silly. But we are working on the things and stuffs. So today was just kind of, you know, getting some of the more intricate things done. Because these eye feather things take um, a little bit more time to work through. Um, our little feather crown or feather hat. Um, we're gonna work on that after we get everything put into place around it. Kitty, please don't do that. You're gonna get stuck. Are you stuck it? Or did you let go? I don't see you, so I don't know if you're still hanging off the back of my chair. I don't know who it was either. I think it was Little. Yeah, it had to be Little because Peabut's on the bed and Cow's in the bedroom, so. Alrighty. Alright. Getting this guy. Kind of haphazardly tucked in there. Okay. Oh, are you? Stop that! Hey, stop. Stop. My chair's falling apart as it is. Stop. A little bit. Let go. Go on. Hey. Now she's attacking me. <sighs> and I don't know. I think she's still attached to my chair. Husband might need to come remove the cat. Little bits. Now she's still not stuck. Stop being a little bastard, little bit. She's just being... Little shit. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's her real name is Little Shit. But <laughs> she's constantly getting into trouble. It started out as Little Bit, but it devolved into Little Shit. But she is quite the Little Shit. Um, always biting us and attacking things and getting into places where she shouldn't be. So I think we have time to do one more green band here. Because I don't think I can get into the kitchen yet to make dinner. Because I think my mother is still sorting her. No, I believe she's sorted. Yeah, but I don't think she's finished eating and cleaned up her her mess yet. But you know what you could do? Could you preheat the oven? Okay. We're having French toast and hash browns for dinner. just for something different. No idea who the husband, oh, he's playing with the dog. I don't think he realizes how loud he's tromping. I don't know if the stomping is being picked up on 
in the microphone. Apologies if it is. Sorry, sorry, it's easy me using pooping inspiration. Oh, it was poop zoomies? Mm-hmm. Well, as long as he goes in his potty pad, then we're fine. Happy potty pad. Do -do 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 -do. Alright, we might actually have to, um... I don't know how I'm gonna get this in here. Oh, like that. Okay, so as long as we go with a super soft one, we can try to squish that in there. So it's just going to be really super tiny tinies. Like the kind that you can't pick up because they're so tiny. We might need the tweezers on this one. This one in there. And have to get these little little guys in here. Yeah, there we go. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is gonna be really... I don't know, don't unfurl. But do get in there. Okay. We're kinda forcing that guy in there. best as we can. A little difficult. Just a little bit. I'm like, why do I have these bumps on the back of my hand? I think I wiped some glue there. And then I think I scratched it off. Oh well, I need you to sit down right in there. So had I thought about how I was going to get these little guys in here, I would not have made this one quite so tight. But for some reason, at the time, when I was laying in the white tissue paper, it just, it didn't dawn on me that I was going to have to get the little green bits crammed in there for some reason. That thought process just never materialized. So, joke's on me. That should be good enough in that section. So, and as you can see, the, the glue will dry clear. This 
making sure that those are actually sat down against the canvas. As we finish cutting up our guys here. It's probably a little tiny. Oh, no, correction, he just fit. All right. So we need some more like that. Okay, I've got a bit of a well of glue right there, so I can't tell if that's actually a gap. It might be an actual gap. Alright, so thinking two more. So when you, um, like after the glue dries, the support, like the light support feather bones, as I like to call them, um, they get hard. But once the glue's been sitting on them again for a little bit, they get a little more pliable. So you can kind of squish these guys in there. You just don't want to push too hard. So that um, so that you don't completely bust the work you did with the white tissue paper. But you can kind of get these guys in there. A little bit easier. If it comes to it. Alright, so we need to get just a little bit more squished in there. make our pieces a little bit bigger now because we've opened up a little bit in this section but we are going to need a couple more green pieces out of our bag probably nowhere near that many Alright, so this, like I said, this is just regular, like, gift bag tissue paper. Nothing special about it whatsoever. It's not the bleeding tissue paper. So you don't have to get anything super fancy. And these colors, aside from the blue, um, that dark, um almost like a not really a navy but close to it that that deep blue 
and like the sky blue that was not part of it that was a part of a different pack of tissue paper but like the greens and the oranges um those came from a multi-pack that i had gotten off amazon it was um 360 sheets uh 10 sheets of each color for i think it was on sale for like 10 bucks so not great, but 36 colors, if I had bought that individually, a pack per color, I mean, I would have gotten more, potentially, uh, per color, but, you know, if that was, like, from the dollar store, that would have been, like, $36, so, not terrible, but, you know, I wasn't able to tailor what colors I got, I just, I was given what was in there, but we've been making it work. I did have to pick up the, like, the ocean colors in a separate pack because I kind of have an idea for another one that uh, I want to do, but we're going to save that idea for a little bit. We're going to do, I think, a painting um, next time out. By the time we're done this, it might be cool enough to have the windows open again, so we might do an oil painting. Um, next time, once we're done with this project, just, you know, break up the monotony a little bit. Oop! Let's not throw the scissors, let's pick them up. I don't want to throw scissors. That is bad. Trying to get an idea of what size we need here. But like things like this, a stylus, um, an arm bent off of a paper clip, uh, a toothpick, a pen cap, even like off of like a big pen or something. Something that's small, that is okay if it gets glue on it, to help you push stuff around, is probably a good idea. That way you're not completely covered in glue. So I think this will be the last section that we'll be doing today, this green spot. So we didn't make a heap ton of progress today, but we still made some progress. And some progress is still progress. This wasn't going to be a speed project. And y'all have been able to kind of see the thought process from from start to finish. Well, hopefully, at least from the beginning so far. Just to kind of get an idea of what's going through my head when I'm trying to put one of these together. And, you know, it's changed a little bit. It's evolved as we've realized what was going to work and what wasn't or what might work a little bit easier there's nothing wrong with changing your game plan part way through if you've realized something might work out a better way
So, um, I don't have Instagram. I've got enough social media stuff to keep track of. Um, but, you know, if you're doing any art and you want to share, feel free to... It doesn't have to be this. You don't have to be following along. If you are, that's cool. Um, if you're not, that's cool too. Um, you know, wh whatever you're doing and you feel like sharing, feel free to tag me on Twitter. You never know um, what might inspire someone else. And the Twitter is niece at Nisi uh, EGM. Like, and I understand if you have to watermark it and stuff because you're afraid, that's fine. Or you can DM it to me. That's cool, too. I think my DMs are open. They should be, based off the weird messages I get sometimes. Do you see a piece of fuzz? What's this? Oh, it's a piece of fuzz. I think. I'm not even sure if I pulled that out entirely. Now that I'm looking at it, I still see a line in there. Like laying in the glue. Alright, got a little teeny yappy yap in there. Is being a bit of a brat. <clears throat> All right. So this is probably going to be about half on this one. All right. That needed to be a little bit more than half on that one, but that's okay. That is okay. All right, we're getting there. We are getting there. Don't forget to clear off the glue and build up on your fingers and um, off the edge of whatever implement you are using. Just so you don't start um, ripping stuff up that you didn't want to be ripped up because the paper will latch onto the tackiness of your finger sometimes and try to come away with you. Actually, we are going to need a few more. I should not have put them away. I thought I had pulled too many. Apparently, I misjudged. Now I probably have too many. For the space that we have left. I'm going to hold on to those little pieces. Because you never know if you're going to need them somewhere else. 
There have been plenty of times where we have needed them somewhere else. Little gap fillers or, you know, the little tiny sections like in between here. Nothing wrong with holding on to those guys. We're just gonna keep on, keep on going. A little bit of a gappy gap in there, and in there. Yeah, those little guys come in quite handy for those sections. I'll grab this guy that was in my hand. I think we need one more piece. Maybe about yay big. Alrighty, and there's that section. Make sure everybody is all nice and seated. Alright, so again, we didn't get too far today, but we did get some things done. And these little um, eye guys, they take a little bit because we have to do each layer. But, you know, I think, where were we? I think we started here, actually. So, one, two, three, four, plus two eye sections. Like I said, we're going to wait to do this section until we get the green, the dark green filled in around it. So, next week, the plan is to get this guy done and to try to at least get up to here. That's the plan. Will that happen? I don't know. We'll try. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll figure it out. So, uh, stream schedule for this coming week. Um, nothing planned for Monday. Tuesday is 100% dark because husband has D&D &D on Tuesdays and that is um, online, so he needs to be able to talk to his people. Um, and you guys would be very confused hearing one side of a D&D &D session. Um, then on Wednesday, we have um, our Wild Challenges stream. This week will be just Bloodthirsty, I think. And um, Thursday will be Minecraft. We'll be back in the desert starting to lay out the wall for our city and figure out, you know... Um, how how big we want that beginning wall section to be and uh, go from there I am okay with encompassing the village into it that we're currently staying in I'm totally fine with that um, I wouldn't mind having some villagers in the city just to give it some life so that, that may be something we end up trying to, to do. Um, let me turn this so you can actually see where we're at so far. Um, and uh, Friday will be more Franchise Friday with Planet Zoo. Um, and I think we're going to start work on a house for some exhibit animals. Now that we've got, um, now that we've got all of the buildings around the turtles and the peafowls sorted, and uh, yeah, so, and then this coming Saturday, I will be co-hosting on the Wild Challenges podcast with Lita and Dave and Tiber are going to be on, 
That is going to be so much fun. Um, so you guys have a great night. Um, I hope your weekend finishes out well. If your week, work week has already started, I hope that it is at least an easy one. And I will see everybody on Wednesday for Bloodthirsty Challenge Leveling. So you guys have a great one. And until next time.